Welcome to Hibiscus Petroleum's Financial Results webcast. This webcast presents an overview of the results reported as part of our quarterly financial report for the three-month period ended 31st March 2019 and released earlier today. This webcast has been prepared by Hibiscus Petroleum Burhad or the company solely for general information purposes only and shall at all times be heard and or viewed together with the full quarterly report for the same period that is made available or published by the company on its website. This webcast may contain forward-looking statements, which are based on current expectations, beliefs, and projections about future events or matters. By listening to and or viewing the webcast, you agree to the limitations and notifications set out in the disclaimer section of this webcast. Our presentation today comprises of six components. In part one, Uday Jairam, our Vice President, Corporate Development, will briefly introduce the company. In part two, Deepak Thakur, our UK JV Asset Manager and Group Petroleum Economist, will provide an overview of and an update on developments at our UK producing asset, the Anna Surya Cluster. Goloka Ravi, our UK Asset Coordinator, will then provide an overview of the recently acquired discovered oil fields offshore in the UK continental shelf in part three. Part four, Dr. Pascal Hoss, a co-founder of Hibiscus Petroleum Burhad and CEO of Sea Hibiscus Cinder in Burhad, will provide an overview of our North Sabah Malaysian producing asset. In part five, Yip Chi Yong, or CY, Vice President, Finance and Group Controller, will present the financial highlights of the company's third quarter results. Uday will then conclude our presentation with some of our key messages for this quarter in part six. Should you have any queries, you may contact our investor relations team via the email address provided at the end of this presentation. I shall now hand over to Uday. Hello, this is Uday Jairam. I am Vice President, Corporate Development at Hibiscus Petroleum Berhad. Let me commence this presentation by providing you with a brief introduction to our company. Hibiscus Petroleum was listed on the main market of Bursa Malaysia in July 2011 with the vision to be a respected and valuable pure play independent oil and gas exploration and production company. Our 2021 mission is to secure 100 million barrels of net proven and probable or 2P oil reserves and or entitlement and achieve a net oil production of about 20,000 barrels of oil per day from currently held assets or potential new ventures located in areas of our geographic focus. We have approximately 1.6 billion shares in issue. These shares are held by more than 16,000 shareholders, with our core management team owning the single largest block of shares in the company with a 10.6% holding. Corporate and institutional shareholders approximately hold a combined 52% in the company, while retail shareholders provide liquidity with circa 37% ownership. On the 15th of May 2019, our market capitalization stood at 1.7 billion ringgit. Hibiscus Petroleum is a component of the MSCI Global Small Cap Index as well as the FTSE Bursa Malaysia Mid-70 Index. In addition, our listed securities are also Sharia compliant. Issued in March 2018 and set to expire in March 2021, we also have approximately 317 million warrants outstanding. The exercise price of these warrants is currently at 1 ringgit 6 sen. The exercise price will step up by 6 sen to 1 ringgit and 12 sen on the 20th of March 2020. Today, our key activities are focused on efficiently monetizing our producing oil fields and growing our portfolio of development and production assets in areas of our geographical focus. These areas are in the United Kingdom, Malaysia and Australia. The company currently has two producing assets, the first being the Anasuria cluster of oil and gas fields located in the UK North Sea, which we acquired about three years ago. Since our acquisition of this asset, the Anasuria cluster has contributed significant positive cash flow and profits to our company. Over the third quarter of financial year 2019, the Anasuria cluster delivered an average of approximately 2,800 barrels of oil equivalent per day net to our company. In addition to the Anasuria cluster, we became the operator of the 2011 Not Saba Enhanced Oil Recovery Production Sharing Contract, or PSC, on 31st March 2018. 
we have a 50% participating interest in this PSC, with the remaining 50% non-operated participating interest being held by Petronas Charigali, a wholly owned subsidiary of Petroleum National Burhad or Petronas, the national oil company of Malaysia. For our 50% participating interest in the North Sabah PSC, our estimated entitlement of daily oil production over the third financial quarter was approximately 5,000 barrels of oil per day. In summary, total oil and gas production rate across both assets averaged approximately 7,800 barrels of oil equivalent per day over the third financial quarter, of which oil production contributed 7,500 barrels per day. Within our current portfolio of assets, our total net proven and probable reserves as of 1st January 2019 stood at 50.7 million barrels of oil, while net contingent oil resources stood at 71 million barrels. Financially, our balance sheet is continuing to strengthen. As of 31st March 2019, our net assets stood at 1.2 billion ringgit, and our unrestricted cash balance stood at 160 million ringgit. We also continue to operate without debt. Our current portfolio, consisting of one exploration, two development and two producing assets, is spread across three continents. In Asia, we operate in Malaysia, while in Oceania, we operate in Australia. In Europe, we are present in the United Kingdom and have interests in several fields under concession agreement type arrangements. We jointly operate several producing fields in the Anasuria cluster and were recently appointed the operator of blocks 15-13A and 15-13B, a development asset. These blocks include the marigold and sunflower discovered oil fields. Based on an independent assessment, the total net 2P oil reserves in the Anasuria cluster is 23.7 million barrels of oil as of 1st January 2019. In Malaysia, we operate four producing fields under the North Sabah PSC, which together contain net 2P oil reserves of 20.5 million barrels of oil. In Australia, under a concession type agreement, we have approximately 6.5 million barrels of 2P oil reserves located in the Vic L31 West Seahorse development asset, which we operate. The future potential of each of our assets is further underpinned by volumes of oil which have been classified as contingent resources. In the United Kingdom, material contingent resources are located in the marigold and sunflower oil fields in which we have a 50% interest. These two discovered oil fields contain approximately 30 million barrels of 2C oil resources net to the company. Another 7.8 million barrels of 2C oil resources net to the company are located within the fields of the Anasuria cluster. In Malaysia, our net 2C oil resources in the North Sabah fields amounts to circa 31.7 million barrels of oil. In the months and years going forward, we intend to gradually convert these contingent resources into proved and probable reserves or entitlement barrels, thereby further enhancing the value of our asset base. Finally, in terms of exploration assets, we also operate the VIC P57 license, which we believe contains exciting opportunities. We currently have a 75.1% direct interest in VIC P57, and over the course of the next 12 months, we intend to engage with potential partners who would be interested to farm into this asset to further high-grade the opportunities we have identified. The chart on your screen depicts the group's average daily oil production target over the next five years. As stated, our target for the 2019 financial year is to deliver between 2.7 and 3 million barrels of oil across both the Anasuria and North Sabah assets. We have sold approximately 2.5 million barrels of crude oil across both our producing assets in the first three quarters of the 2019 financial year. Based on current production momentum, we expect to exceed our target when we close our financial year on 30th June 2019. In order to achieve our 2021 mission of producing 20,000 barrels of oil per day, our main focus will entail enhancing production at Anasuria and the North Sabah fields, converting our 2C resources, particularly in marigold and sunflower, into producing 2P reserves, high-grading exploration prospects and conducting further discussions on sharing nearby infrastructure to monetize the West Seahorse development asset, and continuing to look for opportunities to grow our asset base mainly in or around the areas of our geographic focus. 
Deepak will now take you through the details of our Anasuriya asset in the United Kingdom in part 2 of this webcast. Hello, I am Deepak Thakur. At Habiscus Petroleum Barhad, I have two roles. I am the JV Asset Manager for the Anasuriya cluster. In addition, I am also the Group Petroleum Economist. I will now take you through some information on our first producing asset, the Anasuriya cluster, which is located offshore, the United Kingdom. Our indirect wholly owned subsidiary, Anasuria Habiscus UK Limited or AHUK has been involved in the joint operations of the Anasuria asset for over three years. This asset is located about 175 kilometers east of Aberdeen in 94 meters of water and has been in production since 1996. Based on an independent reserves assessment and the assumptions contained therein, effective 1st January 2019, the estimated remaining economic life of the asset is up to 2038. Our interest in the Anasuria cluster comprises a 50% direct interest in the Teal, Teal South, Gilmo A and Kite fields. We jointly operate these fields together with our partner Pink Petroleum through a jointly owned legal entity incorporated in the United Kingdom called the Anasuria Operating Company. We generally refer to the Anasuria Operating Company as AOC. The cluster also includes the Cook field and in this field we have a non-operated 19.3% interest. We also own a 50% direct interest in the Anasuria APSO. Included as part of Anasuria cluster are all components of the installed subsea production infrastructure and the Anasuria APSO. Taking a closer look at the field layout, the subsea infrastructure underpinning the production of hydrocarbons is quite extensive and spans 25 kilometers from north to south. We utilize the services of Petrofac a reputable international oil field service provider in the role of duty holder for the offshore facilities, pipelines and wells. Our joint ownership of the Anasuri PSO and management of operating costs through a risk reward type arrangement with Petrofac are key drivers in keeping our unit production cost at competitive levels for this type of facility. In Anasuria, net production rate for the current quarter was 2778 barrels of oil equivalent per day based on an average uptime of 71%. Consequently, the OPEX per barrel of oil equivalent for the current quarter was 23.27 US dollars. Several maintenance activities were conducted in the current quarter which impacted the production and uptime metrics at Anasuria and these will be discussed in detail in the next slide. Despite the lower average production rate recorded, the crude oil offtake schedule for the current quarter was not affected. Also, we do not expect the lifting of the remaining cargo for the financial year ending 30th of June 2019 to be materially affected. Approximately 249,000 barrels of oil were sold in the current quarter at the average realized oil price of 60.39 US dollar per barrel. Our achievement of low OPEX per barrel metric has allowed for sufficient headroom for this asset to continue to generate positive cash flow. Whilst maintenance activities conducted in the current quarter have impacted operational performance, we reiterate that we are still on track to deliver the planned offtake schedule for financial year 2019. The average production rate and uptime in the current quarter were primarily driven by three activities as shown in this table. These activities were carried out over a period of approximately one month. The execution of the first activity was driven by a temporary halt to production to mitigate a potential risk in relation to the asset's flare tip. This risk was identified by the UK Health and Safety Executive. Our intention was to address this potential risk during the 2019 offshore turnaround of the Anasuria APSO scheduled for execution in the final quarter of our 2019 financial year. To recap, the offshore turnaround of Anasuria APSO is a periodic planned activity when APSO facilities are completely shut down so that maintenance activities can be carried out to improve the overall performance of the production facilities and to ensure that we continue to provide a safe workplace for our offshore personnel. The last time we carried out an offshore turnaround of the Anasuri APSO was in 2017. Then this activity took approximately one month to be completed. Subsequent to the conduct of offshore turnaround in 2017, we noted that the average uptime recorded for each quarter of the 2018 calendar year 
improved to levels between 82% and 94%, positively impacting production. The 2019 offshore turnaround had been planned as a single program of maintenance activities scheduled for execution in June 2019. Given that some of the activities that were initially planned as part of 2019 offshore turnaround program have already been completed in the current quarter during the flare tip changeout, we now anticipate that the total duration for the 2019 offshore turnaround to be executed in June 2019 to be approximately two weeks. This is substantially less than that of 2017 activity. Our other factors that impacted production and uptime metrics were planned and are described in this slide. In summary, whilst planned and unplanned maintenance activities affect operational performance, these are critical enablers of a safe working environment and overall lead to an improved performance of the offshore facilities. Bearing unforeseen circumstances, these measures together with the production enhancement projects that are being executed this year are expected to improve the operational performance of the Anasuriya asset in the 2020 financial year. The projects identified on this slide have the common objective of taking us towards the target of delivering up to 5,000 barrels of oil per day net to hibiscus petroleum by 2020. Referring to the projects itemized in the table on this slide, the Gilmo P2 site track well, which was executed last year, has been contributing positively to the company since it commenced production in September 2018. The Cook Water Injector project first entails the drilling of a well through which water would be injected to repressurize the cook field. This activity is to be followed with the installation of the pipeline connecting the new well to the water injection pumps located on the Anasuri APSO. We expect the secondary recovery activity to address the natural decline of the production from the cook well with the added benefits of delivering an improved recovery factor from the field. To recap, the cook field is operated by Ithka Energy and this project was sanctioned by JV Partner in May 2018. Drilling operations on the water injection well commenced on 25th of March 2019 and on 2nd of May 2019, the well was drilled to a total measured depth of 13,045 feet or at a true vertical depth subsea of minus 12,248 feet. Activities to drill and complete the water injector well were completed on 25th of May 2019 ahead of our base case plan. In drilling the water injector well, reservoir pressure at the injection well location was found to be as predicted. Additionally, the oil water contact is deeper than originally anticipated. The implication of a deeper oil water contact is positive and is anticipated to increase our net 2P reserves in the cook field. We will make a further disclosure when the detailed work to establish the latest reserves estimate has been completed. Going forward, a subsea pipeline would be installed in the second half of calendar year 2019 to link the water injection well to the Anasuria APSO. Our total net capital expenditure for this project is estimated at 61 million ringgit. Of this amount, 7 million ringgit has been incurred in the period since the project was sanctioned and up to the end of the current quarter. The remaining 54 million ringgit will be incurred over the remaining months of the 2019 calendar year. Similar to the Gilmo P2 side track conducted last year, the Gilmo P1 side track project is an opportunity to drain additional volume of oil by drilling a side track well from the existing Gilmo P1 oil producing well. This project was sanctioned in the current quarter and drilling operations commenced with the Stena Spe drilling rig mobilized to location and deployed anchors on 17th of May 2019. We are targeting to unlock approximately 1.7 million barrel of oil from our current net 2P reserves and the total net capital expenditure for this project is estimated to be 66.3 million ringgit. Bearing unforeseen circumstances, production from Gilmo P1 side track weld is expected to commence upon completion of the project. This is estimated to be in the financial quarter ending 30th of September 2019. I will now hand over to Goloka, who will give you an overview of the marigold and sunflower assets. Hello, I'm Goloka Ravi. I'm an asset coordinator for our UK assets, and I will now briefly take you through the key points of our interests in blocks 15 stroke 13A and 15 stroke 13B, which are development assets also located in the United Kingdom. On the 9th of October 2018, 
we announced that our indirect wholly owned subsidiary, Anasuria Hibiscus UK, had entered into a sale and purchase agreement with Caldera Petroleum Limited to acquire a 50% interest in the blocks 15 stroke 13A and 15 stroke 13B for a total purchase consideration of 37.5 million US dollars. The blocks are located offshore in the UK sector of the North Sea, approximately 250 kilometers northeast of Aberdeen, in water depth of 140 meters. Block 15 stroke 13A consists of a significant oil bearing discovered field to be called Marigold, whilst Block 15 stroke 13B, which lies northeast of Block 15 stroke 13A, consists of a smaller discovered field to be called Sunflower. Based on an independent report by AGR Tracks International Limited, the gross 2C contingent oil resources in the blocks are estimated to be 60 million barrels of oil. As we have 50% interest in the blocks, this translates to 30 million barrels of 2C contingent oil resources net to Hibiscus Petroleum. On the 16th of October 2018, subsequent to receiving all material regulatory approvals, this transaction was completed. In February 2019, we also received the consent of the UK's Oil and Gas Authority, or OGA, to be the operator of the blocks. This acquisition presented an opportunity for us to expand our footprint in an area of our geographic interests and is consistent with our 2021 mission. In addition, given that production from the Anasura cluster generates taxable profits, we believe that the development of these newly acquired fields may provide us with an opportunity to optimize our tax position while secreting value to all our stakeholders through the addition of production. Since the completion of the transaction, we have established a dedicated project team in Kuala Lumpur. The project team has been tasked to conduct the subsurface field development and engineering studies, as well as, with the support of Petrofac, execute the concept select phase as part of the effort to establish a field development plan for Marigold and Sunflower by the end of calendar year 2020. In terms of capital expenditure, approximately 2 million ringgit has been incurred in the current quarter for the concept select phase activities, which are targeted to complete in mid-2019. The development options being considered include fixed platform, floating solutions, as well as tie back to existing nearby infrastructure solutions. We have also identified several stranded discoveries around the marigold and sunflower fields. We believe that potential collaboration with concession owners of some of these stranded discoveries located around our blocks is feasible and will allow a reduction in overall unit development and production cost for all parties. This slide represents the potential value accretion of the marigold and sunflower fields as we achieve key milestones towards our first oil objective from these assets. We purchased interest in the blocks in which these fields are located and based on reports from third-party competent experts, they contain approximately 30 million barrels of 2C contingent oil resources net to the group. We paid 37.5 million US dollars for these interests. This results in an acquisition cost of 1.25 US dollars per barrel. We are currently working on the activities to enable the selection of the development concept. Once the development concept is finalized, our first key milestone will be the achievement of the final investment decision, or FID, for this project to develop these fields and the securing of the approval of the OGA for the Field Development Plan, or FDP. We target to achieve this milestone by the end of the 2020 calendar year. Based on a benchmarking exercise of transactions of assets with a similar development cycle in the UK, the valuation metric for this asset is expected to increase to approximately eight US dollars per barrel in the current oil price environment when the field development plan is approved. This results in an expected net valuation of approximately 240 million US dollars for this asset by December 2020. Furthermore, once the final investment decision has been made to develop these fields, we anticipate that we will farm out up to 15% of our interest in the marigold and sunflower assets. 
Our objective of reducing our interests is to ensure that we are able to fund the development of these assets without overextending ourselves from a gearing perspective. The next key milestone is to achieve first oral by the end of calendar year 2022. We anticipate that by first oral, the valuation metric could increase further to approximately 20 US dollars per barrel if current oral price levels are maintained and our current preferred development option is deployed. Assuming we retain a 35% interest in these assets, this should result in an expected net valuation of approximately 420 million US dollars by the end of December 2022. In summary, we are excited by the potential value to be derived from the marigold and sunflower fields. We see this asset as a game changer for the group, boosting our net oil production rate and establishing the group as a mid-sized ENP player. I'll now hand you over to Pascal to provide a business overview of our Malaysian North Sabah operations. Hello, I'm Pascal Hoss. I'm a co-founder of Hibiscus Petroleum Brahad, and I'm also the CEO of Sea Hibiscus and Dirian Brahad. Sea Hibiscus is the holder of a 50% participating interest in the 2011 North Sabah Enhanced Oil Recovery Production Sharing Contract, or PSC. We are also operator of this PSC. The remaining 50% participating interest is held by Petronas Charigali Sandirian Brahat. This is our first PSC in Malaysia, and our participating interest was acquired through a transaction with the Shell Group that was successfully completed on the 31st of March 2018. The North Sabah PSC has delivered production since 1979, and our production rights under the PSC continue until 2040. Through the PSC and joint operating agreement signed with our partner Petronas Charigali, we have a 50% participating interest and operatorship of four producing oil fields offshore Sabah, Malaysia, namely St. Joseph, South Furious, SF30, and Barton. We also have the operatorship of the Labuan Crude Oil Terminal and all other equipment and assets related to the PSC. As reported by an independent technical valuer, risk advisory, and based on our participating interests, the net 2P oil reserves of the fields under this PSC is 20.5 million barrels as of 1st January 2019 through to the end of the PSC life in 2040. Risk Advisory had also estimated that the 2C contingent oil resources in the fields covered by this PSC, based on our net entitlement, is 31.7 million barrels. Thus, we believe this asset holds a great deal of future potential. Subject to oil price and regulatory approvals, we hope to be able to allocate capital and our technical capabilities towards unlocking the available 2C contingent resources. The table on this slide shows the operational performance of the North Sabah asset over the past four quarters. That is from the 1st of April 2018, when we commenced operatorship of this PSC, until the 31st of March 2019. During the current quarter, North Sabah production facilities recorded an improved average uptime of 95%. This positively impacted average gross oil production rates, resulting in an increase of approximately 9% when compared to that of the preceding quarter. Average OPEX per barrel for North Saba decreased to 11.76 US dollars per barrel for this quarter, due to a reduced level of maintenance activities being conducted. We expect OPEX per barrel to increase over the next two financial quarters with a ramp up in plant maintenance activities. During the current quarter, we conducted two crude oil offtakes. A total of approximately 578,000 barrels of oil were sold at an average realized price of 67.87 US dollars per barrel. Overall, we are pleased with our operating performance for this quarter. We continue to work towards aggressive production targets and we pursue cost reduction opportunities without compromising the high health and safety standards that are expected in our industry. Referring to the projects shown on this slide, in August 2018, Petronas approved the St. Joseph infill drilling project through the milestone review for project maturation process. As part of the same process, Petronas subsequently approved the field development plan in December 2018. This project entails the drilling of three infill producer wells utilizing a triple splitter wellhead from the St. Joseph Jacket A platform. There will also be a requirement for minimal topside facilities modification. From an expected life of field reserves of 2.8 million stock tank barrels, 
This project is expected to add approximately 2,600 barrels of oil per day, gross, at its peak production. The total gross capital committed to this project is anticipated to be approximately 142.6 million ringgit. This will be shared equally with our joint venture partner, Petronas Charigali. Drilling operations commenced on the 22nd of May 2019, when the PVD-1 drilling rig mobilized towards the St. Joseph Field location. First oil production from this project is expected in August 2019. In March 2019, we obtained Petronas Milestone Review 4 endorsement for the SF-30 infill drilling project. The total estimated capex is approximately 126.6 million ringgit, which will also be shared equally with Petronas Charigali. Drilling operations are currently scheduled to commence in August 2019, with first oil production targeted to flow in early November 2019. This project is expected to add around 4,000 barrels per day at its peak, with expected life of field reserves of 3.16 million stock tank barrels. These projects are consistent with the group's strategy to convert contingent resources within the North Saba asset into producible reserves, thus unlocking economic value from these fields. I'll now pass you on to CY, who will take you through the financials of the group for the current quarter. Hi, I'm CY, Vice President of Finance and Group Controller, and I will take you through the financial highlights for the current quarter. The current quarter represents the fourth quarter that actual North Sabah business performance data under the operatorship of Sea Hibiscus is being reported for detailed analysis. Earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization or EBITDA for the North Sabah asset is reported at approximately 79 million ringgit for the current quarter from the sale of two crude oil offtakes. The EBITDA margin for the current quarter increased to 50% from 43% in the previous quarter. The increase was driven by a lower average OPEX per barrel achieved in the current quarter as planned maintenance activities were commenced and completed on the offshore facilities in the previous quarter. Net tax charge for North Sabah in the current quarter amounted to approximately 26 million ringgit, resulting in a profit after tax for the North Sabah segment of 38 million ringgit. The higher net tax charge in the current quarter compared to the previous quarter was due to a higher income, driven mainly by higher crude oil offtakes. Tax accrued in the current quarter, when accumulated with similar accruals made in the previous quarter and the financial quarter ended 30 September 2018, represent the best estimate of total tax obligations for C Hibiscus as at the 31st of March 2019. Turning to the Anosuria segment, EBITDA for this asset was approximately 45 million ringgit. The EBITDA margin for the current quarter reduced to 68% from 86% in the previous quarter, largely due to lower average uptime as planned and unplanned maintenance work was carried out in the current quarter. For the current quarter, profit after tax delivered by the Anosura segment amounted to approximately 27 million ringgit from the sale of one offtake. The net tax charge to the Anasura segment in the current quarter of 1 million ringgit was due to the recognition of additional income tax liabilities subsequent to a reassessment of year-to-date income tax obligations. Whilst profits are extremely important, management's focus remains on delivering strong and sustainable EBITDA levels as long-term business continuity is of the highest priority. Our business performance is underpinned by several factors. Predominantly, the price of the brand crude oil benchmark at approximately the time of a scheduled offtake from our crude oil storage facilities. Given that oil price is affected by global macroeconomic factors which are not within the control of the company, focus is placed on the operational performance of the assets, such as production rates and facilities availability, as well as the management of operational expenses. A key metric that we utilize to track our operational performance is average unit production cost. The average unit production cost for both the Anasura cluster and the North Sabah PSC are well below the average realized oil price achieved in the respective quarters. As shown in slide 23, we have seen oil prices much lower and higher than current crude price levels and we have managed, on all occasions, to remain profitable. The careful management of costs to maintain low operational expenditure 
and the delivery of production enhancement projects are key towards obtaining a low unit production cost structure. This is a significant contributor towards our profitability. We wish to reiterate that management's focus remains on delivering strong and sustainable EBITDA levels as long-term business continuity is of the highest priority. The group operates two producing assets in two countries. The tax regimes applicable in the oil and gas exploration and production sector for each of these countries differ. In Malaysia, the tax regime under which Malaysian oil and gas activities are governed is the Petroleum Income Tax Act 1967, also known as PETA. The provisions of PETA are applied to net taxable petroleum income at a rate of 38%. In the UK, the total tax rate for AH-UK is 40% which consists of a ring fence corporation tax and a supplementary charge at 30% and 10% respectively. Any capital expenditure in the UK is fully deductible from the taxable income in the same financial year that it has been incurred, only after which both the above-mentioned taxes are applied, leading to a reduced amount of tax payable for that year. Simultaneously, deferred tax liabilities, which are treated as an expense to the profit and loss account, are recognised in the same financial year. Such deferred tax liabilities are non-cash in nature. In the UK, capital expenditure incurred in the financial year provides the benefit of immediately reducing tax payable within that same financial year. Apart from optimising our tax position, capital expenditure also directly or indirectly leads to production enhancement and thus, we are always developing value-accreting projects for investment and implementation. Over the past few quarters, our balance sheet has been gradually strengthening, more so with the introduction of the North Sabah asset as part of the group's overall business portfolio. We have built our total assets to approximately 2.2 billion ringgit, and shareholders' funds stand at about 1.2 billion ringgit. Year on year, total assets have increased by 36%, and shareholders' funds have increased by 39%. Net assets per share currently stands at 76 cents. In addition, as at 31st March 2019, the group's unrestricted cash balance is at a healthy 160 million ringgit. In March 2019, the group paid the first tranche of deferred consideration relating to the acquisition of a 50% participating interest in North Sabah, amounting to approximately 20 million ringgit per the agreed schedule. The restricted cash recorded in our results relates to a security for our portion of the estimated cost of decommissioning the facilities of the Anasuria cluster. In this regard, we are required to periodically place monies into a trust and this commences 18 months after the completion date of the Anasuria cluster acquisition. This activity will continue until such time that the security has been fully provided. As of 31 March 2019, a sum equivalent to 61.1 million ringgit has been deposited with a UK trustee to support our ongoing obligations in this area. To note, the group remains debt-free as all our activities and acquisitions to date have been funded with equity and internally generated funds. Over the course of the next six months, we anticipate that we shall undertake certain capital-raising initiatives to ensure that the projects and opportunities we have in hand which are expected to enhance production and create value, may be executed smoothly. We are evaluating our options bearing in mind factors such as long-term capital requirements, the overall weighted average cost of capital, as well as preference for the group to maintain a certain level of agility and financial flexibility, amongst others. As our plans mature, we shall make the relevant disclosures. Before we wrap up, I would like to hand over to Uday to highlight a few takeaway points. Hello again. I would like to close this presentation with some key messages. At the group level, we continue to focus on delivering results for the current financial year ending 30th June 2019 or financial year 2019. Our target is to deliver 2.7 to 3 million barrels of oil from our two producing assets in the financial year 2019. To date, we have already sold approximately 2.5 million barrels of crude oil across both assets in the first three quarters of this financial year, with four offtakes coming from Anasuria and a further five offtakes from North Sabah. 
Based on the current production momentum across both assets, we expect to exceed our target of 2.7 to 3 million barrels in financial year 2019. We believe that we are on track to achieve our financial year 2019 business objectives to improve the operational and financial performance as compared to financial year 2018. Several planned maintenance activities on Anasuria have been completed in the current quarter. In addition, the upcoming 2019 offshore turnaround, which is scheduled to be undertaken in June 2019, is expected to complete as planned. These activities will enable us to maximize the production from the Guillemot P1 sidetrack project in financial year 2020. Our focus will continue to be on maintaining low unit production costs and to generate strong EBITDA growth for the group. As part of our objective to enhance our combined net production to over 12,000 barrels of oil per day by 2021, we have an aggressive CapEx investment program with a total of eight wells being drilled across the group in calendar year 2019. In the UK, the Cook Water Injection Well has been completed and drilling of the Guillemot P1 Sidetrack Well has commenced operations. In Malaysia, the St. Joseph Infill Drilling Project has commenced operations. The objective will be to drill three wells, with a further three wells to be drilled as part of the SF30 Infill Drilling Project. In Australia, we are encouraged by the results of the subsurface evaluation work that has been completed as part of the minimum guaranteed work program for the VIC P57 exploration license. We currently have a 75.1% direct interest in VIC P57, and over the course of the next 12 months, we intend to engage with potential partners who would be interested to farm into this asset to further high grade the opportunities we have identified. We also continuously look for opportunities to grow our asset base in order to achieve our 2021 mission. We are excited by the activities that lay ahead for Hibiscus Petroleum and hope all these developments will act as positive value-enhancing triggers for our shareholders. <laughs>